everybody. Jill here with North Texas Vegetable Gardening, canning recipes, a little bit of everything. Gonna have another warm weekend. So my number one video, guys, for the last 48 hours has been um, packing up your dry, uh, dry beans and rice for long-term storage. So I'm glad to see that uh, some folks out there are starting to get prepared for some uh, very troubling times that we expect to hit. You know, guys, I've said this probably a couple of years. Such a strange time. It is such a strange time. So many changes for my family and for a lot of your families in the last two years. And um, actually, so many changes for all of our families in the last two years, no doubt. Um, our whole society has changed or morphed into um, something maybe not so friendly at times, and I don't like it. But um, anyway, we got to keep plugging. We got to keep on going, don't we? And uh, for us, that means uh, continuing to plant and uh, grow our own food and preserve our own food by canning, freeze drying. A lot of you dehydrate, um, freezing. We freeze our squash and zucchini. This year, I'm probably going to freeze dry some of it. Um, I did some last year, but um, our preferred method is uh, freezing it, blanching it, and freezing it. So I'm hoping that that's gonna start coming in here real soon. Lots of things going on. Those turnips are getting ready uh, to be have to be pulled. But uh, let's talk about what's going on with my beets. So beets are a superfood. They're one of my favorite things to grow, guys. Um, I'll grow them in this spring and then I'll grow them again in the fall. And they're, they, take, they take a little bit, they take a little bit of time. So uh, I wanna show you what I found this morning. What's eating my beets, guys? Boy, they just dug this up and ate that beet root right off. And here's another one. And you can see little teeth marks. Looks like it's a little bit bigger than a rodent. I bet I got me some bunny foo-foos in here. What do y'all think? So we do think that it's uh, some bunny foo-foos that are getting in here. So Greg's gonna have to shore up the high tunnel. Um, we have a hole back there in the corner. You might can see it right there. And um, make sure that the bunnies can't get in here. Um, I don't mind when bunnies come in and nibble every now and then, but um, I, I didn't have as many beets come up as I wanted. And so now I'm kind of coveting them because we do can them and uh, they are a superfood, superfood. And so uh, kind of kind of protective of my beets. I really wish they'd go for these turnips and I got tons of turnips they're gonna have to be pulled. Now, last weekend, we did put some bush beans in the ground. And over here behind me, these are our peppers and our tomatoes. And what you're seeing in there is that cover crop growing um, in amongst them, intermingled. And we're gonna see how this goes. Um, we'll keep it down low, I think. Um, we did get a new little tool that I think Greg's gonna enjoy. And it's one of them little Black & Decker uh, cordless mower things but really it's a weed eater that sits on a base that looks like a mini lawnmower that will fit perfectly in between these rows and i'll, I'll do another video on that but um yeah tomatoes are looking fabulous look so what you're seeing on the leaves is a little bit of dust and stuff but yeah they have really taken off since he planted them last week and we have peppers in there and again uh, we're gonna have to get in here and make sure that the peppers have room and it looks like you know they're doing okay and uh, greg did have to spray these for aphids unfortunately and um, but we have quite a few of these so this week we are going to be doing or this weekend hopefully we're going to be putting the cucumbers in the ground look at those beautiful turnips in there so my tower of power guys is looking fabulous and more things are starting to come up in my little seed or in my little compartments. Can't wait, guys, to see how we do with my Tower of Power this year. So a lot of people are asking, can we grow this? Can we do this? Is it too late to do that? Is it too early to do this? Guys, my best advice to you is plant now, plant whatever you want, and try to keep it going throughout the spring and the summer months. 
we have tested certain varieties uh, throughout the year <clears throat> to see if we can grow them off season kinda. And uh, I'd say that we're probably 80% successful on what we start when we start. I I'm not really worried about that anymore right now. Um, I know that there are recommendations of when you can plant and what you can plant and where you can plant and what's full sun and what's full shade or what's part shade. I'll tell you here in Texas that if something calls for full sun, it's not meaning the full sun in Texas, at least it, where we're at, where we have no trees and no shade. And when the heat kicks in, it kicks in. So if you have something that says full sun, um, I would still recommend that it gets some shade and that it's not getting beat on by that hot sun during the summer. I don't know what kind of year we're gonna have this year. There's my Miss Bear. Nope, I don't know what kind of year we're gonna have this year, but uh, I suspect it's gonna be a hot and dry one. And uh, they're already talking about water rations out here in the DFW area. And uh, so, so thank God we have that well. Thank God we have that well. Because both of these high tunnels and our outside gardens and our raised beds and our containers, they're gonna need a lot of water and uh, we don't gotta fight nobody to get it. So uh, thank goodness. So uh, you're gonna need some shade on your full sun plants, guys. Get some shade. And if I were you and you don't have a well, I would start looking in to some rain barrels very serious, very seriously. And I would uh, put it, hook it up to my uh, gutter system off the house or off your shed. And guys, I would start collecting as much water as possible. So if they do say you can't water, you'll have some. In fact, I would even go so far to say, go get you some of those uh, big totes or some of the, the water barrels and I'd fill them up now um, before they start to ration water here, at least in the North Texas area. I would fill them up now so that you had them on reserve. Put them in a shaded spot, don't let the sun beat down on them where they'll get algae and uh, protect them. But I think you'll do just fine if you go ahead and start storing some water. For those of you where your broccoli is bolting, which are these flowers here. I'm gonna show you where you're gonna find your seeds. Right here. After it flowers, you start seeing these little seed pods. And what we'll do is we'll cut these off, we'll hang them upside down and let them dry out. And then we will have our seeds for next year, guys, and next fall. And that's how you get seeds from your broccoli that is bolting. The well-dressed ladies are still doing their job, guys. Ooh, I'm so glad they're sticking around and I hope that they've laid their eggs in our soil so that we are gonna have ladies much of the season. So this is some of our celery. You can see it's quite low and you wanna know why? Cause we've been doing the cut and come again. I've been coming out here and cutting off what I want and guys, it's coming back. It may be little stalks, but they're edible and you can use them in your soups and stews and we love them. Onions in a baby pool. You better believe it. Look how beautiful these onions are. Now, we've used some this week. Greg made uh, Julia Child's. He made her beef bourguignon, or however you say it, and it was delicious, and he used our onions. This beautiful kale is really rebounded from the rodent damage we had earlier in the year. We grew everything in here, guys, from seed. Everything. Um, so excited, but uh, we love our kale. Kale is uh, extremely nutritious as well. It is high in your uh, your vitamin K, your vitamin, uh, I think it's potassium and uh, phosphorus maybe, but uh, kale is very delightful in your salads and soups um, if you wanna make kale chips. So we are very happy with how the kale has rebounded. And we have some out there in the raised beds too. So our goal this year Sorry, my thing said it was battery low. My goal this year is, um, our goal, mine and Greg's, is to use our plants as our uh, main nutrition, our vitamin content, and our medicinals. All of these plants have something that our body needs, whether it's magnesium, vitamin C, vitamin K, protein, all natural. And so that is our goal. And that's why we're working so hard on our soil as well. In order for your plants to give you these nutrients, these true nutrients, you have to make sure that your soil is in very good shape. And Greg is doing so many different things um, to get our soil that way. And uh, some of the things that he's doing is using um, a mineral mix and he uh, does a soil drench and a root drench and he is using cover crops because we will really want to get 
all the vitamins and nutrients that we can out of our food um, instead of having to take supplements all the time. Shenanigans. Shenanigans galore. Okay, so we put Pop's house on the market last week. We have a couple of things going on. We're hoping that it sells pretty quick. If I could ask you guys to please say a prayer for that. Um, he's about done with the whole situation already. And um, we just want this to go pretty quick and we want uh, to get him out here. And right back there, guys, is where his little tiny home's gonna go. He's getting very anxious. He's getting um, eager to get out here with us and we are too. So did y'all see that video um, from Farmer Dre? We have been watching him since the beginning, uh, since he started his channel. And he's a big tomato uh, farmer up in the Midwest. And uh, that poor old boy, uh, rodents, got into his high tunnel and ate quite a few of his tomato plants. Now, like I said, we've been watching him uh, since he started his channel. And I don't re ever recall um, seeing him have rodent issues. He may have, and he just didn't do a video on it, but kind of makes me think. So we've only had rodent issues in the last year, as you guys know, and uh, we're still kind of battling them now, but to see that he's having rodent issues kind of makes me wonder what's going on. But it also wants me to bring up some things to you all, especially you beginning gardeners. Is, um, is there really any um, one little trick? Is there really any... Um, just some one thing you can do to be prosperous in your garden. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you that there's many methods that will make you prosperous in your garden, but you don't know until you get out there and try. And I don't want you to be discouraged. Gardening can be hard work and it can be discouraging at times. There's another video out there of a family who has a flower farm up in Iowa. And on March 4th or 5th, uh, they got hit with an F4 tornado and you might go check them out and if you do, um, tell them that we sent you. I believe the channel is Pepper Hello, but uh, so you never know, guys, what's going to happen. It could be insect damage. It could be weather damage. Um, it could be anything. It could, it could be, a, you know, you're getting a, a, a late frost or a late freeze, or it could be an early frost or an early freeze. Um, it could be aphids like we've battled. It could be rodents. Just about anything, guys, can attack your garden but don't give up. There's many, many people, hundreds of people you don't even know that's out there rooting for you and praying for you and praying for your success and praying for your harvest. So I want to encourage you to keep on going. Greg and I have been gardening. I've been gardening for probably about 17 or 18 years. Greg has been gardening with me for the last uh, 15 years. So <clears throat> he's really gotten serious about it the last probably three or four years. And, uh, things have just really taken off. So don't give up, don't give up. Start small, start in a container, start in a green stalk, um, start in a raised bed, you know, go out and make you a little spot out in your backyard, but don't give up, don't give up. There's a lot of channels out there that will give you great tips. And there's a lot of channels out there that will give you encouragement and tell you what's going on and um, how to help you grow, whatever it is that you guys decide you want to grow. So if you feel like that you fell on your bottom last year or that you've already fallen on your bottom this year, get up, dust it off and replant and get going again um, because you will really enjoy it and you will learn there's never, you will never ever fail in your gardens, guys. You will never fail. You will always just learn, which will help you in the next year. You still have plenty of time, plenty of time, my friends. Put some seeds in the ground or run to Callaway's or Home Depot or Lowe's and get you some plants. Put them in some containers and get going. Plenty of time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. <clears throat> Stick around with us. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you as a part of our community. Um, we love each and every one of our subscribers. And we do uh, communicate with them and we pray for them and they pray for us. And we couldn't be uh, more thankful for the people that we get to engage with about gardening and about farming and all kinds of other things. So God bless you. God bless you all. Take care. Have a wonderful weekend. 
I will be starting more videos tomorrow. And uh, some of these turnips got to come up, guys. We'll see you soon.